Happy New Year, friends. It's 2021, and I wanted to do a quick recap video for uh, what we did in 2020 and looking forward a little bit to what we're going to work on this year in 2021. And um, for those of you who are new, Natalie is a, uh, as far as I know, very unique Ruby implementation that's compiled. Uh, it's, you know, an implementation detail is that it's transpiled to C++ and then we shell out to GCC or Clang uh, as our backend to produce a binary. And um, like I said, as far as I know, we're the only Ruby implementation that's, that's doing that. Uh, there's still a lot of work left to do, but I wanted to um, kind of go over some of the milestones of things that we did this year and uh, of some false starts and maybe give you some encouragement if you're working on something or maybe thinking about working on a side project and just uh, just be transparent with how it has gone and failures and successes and stuff like that. So let's get started. Um, way back in November 2019 was the initial commit. And in that same month, we got Hello World to work. Um, and um, you got to start somewhere, right? The Fibonacci example code, um, we got that working in December and the board slam code, we got it working in April. And so I'll explain what the board slam is, as I think that's a little bit unique. This is a math game my kids play, uh, six by six grid of numbers, one through 36. You have to roll three numbers with dice, and then you have to find a way to use math operations to produce the numbers one through 36. And sometimes there are missing numbers that you just can't produce. Like with uh, the numbers three, five, and one, there is no reasonable way to produce 19 through 30. Now, maybe you could do some crazy power, um, but no reasonable human way to do that. And so this was a, an example of a Ruby script I had written before Natalie. Uh, so I didn't um, write it targeting Natalie, I just wrote it as a Ruby script. And getting this to compile was a pretty big milestone. Uh, and then there's another, another milestone is the about code, which um, uses this GTK library that we're working on. Uh, GTK3. And it uh, what makes this unique is that um, you can embed C++ code in line in the Ruby code. And this is a unique feature of Natalie and I think will be a killer feature once Natalie is uh, usable by the masses. I think this is going to be an amazing killer feature and I can't wait for people to play around with us and see what people can build. So I think, I think this will be a pretty cool feature when we get Natalie to a point where um, it's usable by uh, by normal people, not just people who like fixing bugs. Um, but uh, there's another cool milestone that happened. Uh, in May, I started using C++ for Natalie. I started converting the C to C++. Now it's not completely idiomatic C++. There's still some C-isms throughout the code and there may always be. Um, I am not a C++ programmer, so if you see me doing some weird stuff, uh, in Natalie in the code, then maybe that explains it. Otherwise, uh, it may just be that I'm weird. But anyway, I read a really cool book called um, C++ Crash Course. And uh, it's by Josh somebody. Uh, this book is fantastic, Josh Lospinoso. Lospinoso. Uh, this is a fantastic book, and it taught me that I don't have to use all of C++. I can use um, what I what I want to use, and I can treat it like a super C. And that uh, really blew my mind and really changed my uh, shifted my paradigm a little bit. So um, yeah, that's that was a big milestone. I'm not going to read all of these, but. Um, you know, we added CMake support, which really helped our build times and uh, helped our build process be a little more um, understandable and, and not not as unruly. Uh, big milestone was adding fibers and enumerators. Uh, that was, uh, I took some assembly code that I had to, uh, I didn't fully write it, but I, I tweaked it and kind of learned how it worked. And uh, there's a video about that. I think I made a video about it, but that was a big, uh, a big milestone is basically adding coroutines to our Ruby implementation and figuring out how those work. Um, and then the biggest milestone, uh, the one I was most excited about, I have a video about that where people laughed because I was so excited, but um, getting Ben Natalie to be able to compile Natalie, uh, 
yeah, it, it's you just got to go watch it because that um, that was huge. Basically, the compiler can now compile the compiler. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even know uh, how else to say that, but it's 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 huge. So there were some false starts in the year and I was going to I'm not going to read all this. Don't worry. Uh, but our parser. <laughs> Our parser has gone through many lives. Uh, originally, we started out writing our own parser using String Scanner. It, it was a recursive descent parser. It had no tokenization. Um, we had tried to do backtracking. It was a mess. Uh, I quickly ripped that out and started using the Ruby parser gem, which I did not write, and we've been using that ever since. Um, so that is kind of a wart to me. That's something I, I'm been trying to get rid of for a while. If you've been following, you might have seen I did a series on the peg-based parser, parsing expression grammar, uh, which failed. And then soon after, I started working on a handwritten uh, recursive descent parser using the Pratt parsing technique. And that looks like it's going to be successful. It's very fast so far, and it's able to compile the Fib, uh, Fibonacci example code and almost able to compile the board slam example code. So something I've been working on the last few weeks. But um, yeah, that was a false start of, of, you know, trying different parsing stuff and trying to get the Ruby parser gem to compile, uh, which I've given up on now. But yeah, so I, there's some failures in there, but I've found many ways not to write a parser. That's, that's for sure. The garbage collector, I started working on a garbage collector. I have a video about that back in March. Uh, decided that I don't like working on garbage collectors. <laughs> I hate it. Um, maybe someday I'll get back to it and um, find the inspiration for working on that. But in June, I added the Bo Boem. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but the sort of standard garbage collector that a lot of projects use. Added that into the project and uh, I've been happy ever since. Uh, so... Um, yeah, I'd say that was a false start of thinking I wanted to write a garbage collector. Um, and then uh, threads. I added threads. I removed threads. I don't know that I even want Natalie to have threads just because it, it complicates everything. And um, so, yeah, so, so definitely some failures in there. I wanted to uh, go over the contributors, kind of thank everyone who's contributed to, to Natalie over the year. And uh, Chris Watson did some work with strings and comparisons and um, on float, did some meth missing methods to float. Uh, Ali did a ton of work on the CMake build process, added methods to kernel, um, added uh, enumerable methods and array methods and hash methods and enumerator and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so a big, huge thanks to Ali. Um, Max tried to do some work with enumerable, but it didn't quite work out. So I do appreciate Max giving it a try. And I think he ended up fixing uh, something with our tests. And uh, last uh, was Joshua doing a ton of work getting our open our uh, project to build on OpenBSD. And that's totally, uh, totally cool and amazing. And I love that he did that. So I'm hoping that we'll have um, even more contributors in 2021. And uh, I want this little sidebar to be maxed out. I don't know what the max is, but I want there to be, you know, 20 people over here on the sidebar. I think that would just be fantastic. Um, so is there anything else? That's the brief history uh, thought I had. So things for the future. Uh, what do we want to work on in 2021? I want to finish our parser. We're still working on it. I want to totally replace. Uh, so I want this gem file to go away. The only um, two things we're using from it are the Ruby parser, and this is part of that, and mini test. And so if I can get the, our own parser and not use Ruby parser gem, then that's uh, huge. And uh, replacing mini test won't be that hard because we already have our own test runner. I just need to change some syntax. But getting rid of this gem file, not relying on bundler, I think will be huge. And just being able to use a stock Ruby to uh, bootstrap Natalie. So what we'll do is take the stock Ruby on whatever system you're on, you download Natalie, uh, run a build using the stock Ruby to bootstrap Natalie, and then you have a standalone binary uh, for uh, for Natalie, and you can use that. So that's how we'll bootstrap in the future, but I have to finish the parser to make that work. Um, performance, there's all kinds of room for 
performance. It's not slow. Natalie's not uh, horribly slow. There are some things that were faster than um, the the stock Ruby, like MRI, faster than MRI in certain things, but we're slower in other things. And there's all kinds of room for performance improvements with method, method caching and um, try not to put so much stuff on the heap. So that's something I will definitely be looking into this year. Uh, completeness and correctness, uh, trying to implement more, more methods and uh, trying to pass more Ruby specs. Uh, and then um, maybe, like I said, maybe write our own GC, but this is definitely a stretch goal and depends on how well these other things go. So uh, that's it. I don't know uh, if this is gonna be an amazing, spectacular video for you to watch, uh, but I don't care. I, I'm sort of doing this for me, sort of a, um, just a, like a little diary entry. Like, uh, this is, this is what I spent my time on in 2020 outside of family, outside of, um, work, you know, uh, all of my other obligations. When I had a spare moment, I was programming on Natalie and this is, uh, uh it's quite an accomplishment, I think. And it's something I'm proud of. And, uh, I can't wait to take it a little bit further in 2021. Yeah, I just can't wait to uh, to see what happens. So uh, if you want to help, if you want to help with Natalie, the best, uh, the easiest way to get started is um, to look down through some of the, the issues that we have. Uh, we have some bugs. We have some stuff that isn't finished, like innumerable stuff. Uh, if you want to work on any of that, then go for it. If you want to see if Natalie can run a Ruby script that you've written or some you know Ruby script that you find on Stack Overflow and just see if it'll work. And if it doesn't, you know, figure out the bug and either file an issue. You don't even have to, you don't even have to fix it. You can just file an issue and document what doesn't work. Uh, even better, you can submit a pull request uh, to fix that bug. So those are some ways you can you can contribute. And um, uh, the, the way I like the most is just encouragement. And I think this goes for any open source project. If someone is working on something, uh, try not to be the, the person who just says, hey, this doesn't work for me, or this, is, um, this isn't complete, you need to do X, Y, Z. Try to be the person who says, wow, I can see you've put a lot of work into this. It's fantastic. Is there some way I can help? I've noticed it doesn't do X, Y, Z. Um, is there, is there any other way I can help you identify the bug, fix the bug, whatever. So try to be that person and try to be a good steward of open source code. Um, and I, I think, uh, that's it. So I, I appreciate you watching this weird and, uh, uh, kind of outside the normal video. I hope to get back to making just hacking videos very soon and I will see you then. Bye.